What's a piece of information you learned that now feels almost illegal to know? You can ask the FBI if they have a file on you. They do now. When I was a kid, my dad taught me how to pick a lock. I became very interested in different kinds of locks and purchased a lock pick set. I practiced for years and became pretty good at certain types of locks. So over the years every now and then, if a neighbor locks themselves out of the house or a friend loses the key to a padlock or a lockbox I've been able to help. But the reactions I tend to get from people, even while I'm helping them with their lock is mainly one of mistrust. I'm not a cat burglar. I just like locks. It takes three full rotations to remove a human head due to the skin's elasticity. Thanks. I feel like I needed to know this. I wish I could unlearn this. This is England knowledge, other countries may vary, if you are struggling to pay bills, make water the first one you skip. Access to water is protected by law so the utility supplier cannot cut you off. I worked for a giant tech company and apparently share the same name as a very high up hardware engineer, got put on email threads I definitely didn't belong on. The tricks doctors use to distract you when they're trying to check your reflexes. My doctor tickled my butthole while testing my gag reflex. What should you never do on a first date? Be on your phone the whole time. Only talk about your previous relationships. She talked about him so much I started to miss the guy. Once had a dude grab some of my food off of my plate with his bare hands. He was trying to do a cutesy sharing food thing but it was a poached egg. He grabbed a poached egg with his bare hands right off of my plate. Please do not be like that guy. Propose. Invite your spouse. It's just so awkward. Reveal your collection of used panties you've bought online. Go to the movies. I think going to the movies should be reserved for people in relationships. Why? Because if you go to the movies on the first day you'll practically have wasted two hours watching something, not being able to talk and get to know each other. Hey girl do you want to see my basement? What is something that is totally lame without alcohol but totally awesome with alcohol? The company of a drunk. Dancing in a big crowd to music you'd normally never listen to. Also sports you don't like. I would never watch baseball otherwise but went to Cubs Stadium with a buddy who is a baseball fan and after a couple beers, the pageantry really rubs off on you. Hand sanitizer. Back in my university days there was a hot dog cart outside the bar after closing every busy night. We always lined up for one since they were the absolute best dogs in town. I stayed sober one night and got a hot dog after the night was over. I couldn't believe how disgusting it was. Cart hot dogs after the bar are totally awesome with alcohol. Not so much without. Cart owner knew his clientele. Drinking games. You ever played Ring of Fire with cups of water? Beer pong but with water could be called hydration pong. Karaoke. Oh bad memories. Stupid video recording phones. I honestly didn't want to remember. Wedding receptions. Having been to a dry one, it was seriously the worst. What's the most unattractive male name? I have a guy in my class whose name is Blandon. I mean he is bland in his name. Pubert. I have a nephew named Anthony, who always gets mad when I call him Anthony. When I was a teen, Playboy did a survey of names for attractiveness. Mine came in second to last. Stanley. I've told this story before, and it sounds made up, but my dad's boss's name was Harry Dick. He didn't go by Harold, or anything like that. He went by Harry Dick. My dad was a warrant officer. His boss was a major. Major Harry Dick. Major Dick. It's real. And you'd ask, was he a good dude, like did he have a good sense of humor about it? Nope, no one liked him. He was a major dick. I went to school with a kid named Shabim. Dr. Wet Farts. Billiam. Seriously. Parents knew if they called him William people would just call him Bill so, Billiam. What was the most gruesome thing you saw at your school? My high school had three balconies on the second floor. Walking between classes you could see the mass of students moving below. There were massive skylights above, so I assume this was designed to allow natural light into the ground floor. One day someone thought it would be hilarious to toss an unopened can of soda over the balcony. People start yelling duck and a kid looked up just in time to have the can land right on his eye socket. He lost that eye. Second would probably be the kid who ended up at the bottom of the pile in football practice and came off the field screaming and his thumb was in the middle of his bomb.
I saw a guy pick a fight with another guy who I later found out was a state champion boxer. Dude A threw several punches which Dude B easily dodged. When it became clear Dude A wasn't going to stop, Dude B threw one right hook. I saw teeth and blood fly, and Dude A hit the deck immediately, obviously unconscious. Dude B then backed away with his hands over his head to show he didn't intend to do anything more. One Punch Man What's something that you do that you're pretty sure is normal, but you don't know for sure? Having imaginary conversations with people, that I know will never actually happen in real life. I'm much braver in those talks than real talks. Whenever I haven't talked to a person for a couple of hours, I just say something out loud to test if my voice still exists. Putting my hands on my pockets where I keep my phone slash wallet when I closely pass by someone, just in case they may be a pickpocket. I have conversations and heated debates with myself. Not out loud but I'm fixated on something I will zone out and like four versions of me are in my head. I have a lot to say but why say it out loud when you already have four people in your head you can talk to. I daydream constantly. I'll sit there and be imagining I'm the hero of some story, or I just want a billion dollars and how I'm spending it. I just have an imagination I get lost in when nothing is happening. Feeling like you're looked at suspiciously when you leave a store without buying anything. If I have a song stuck in my head I often click my teeth to the drum beat. When my wife notices me doing it she asks me what the song is. What is your best insult, without using curse words? I bet your parents change the subject when people ask about you. You're difficult to underestimate. Stolen from Bob's Burgers, if she was a spice, she'd be flour. In the world of hot sauces, you would be ketchup. I wish we were better strangers, Shakespeare. My grandfather would often wish us a goodbye by saying, come back when you can't stay so long. I envy those who don't know you. It'd say you could learn from this, but then we'd both be wrong. I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. You're not the dumbest person in the world, but you better hope they don't die. One of my faves, you couldn't pour water out of a boot with the instructions on the heel. You've only got two brain cells and they're both fighting for third place. Somewhere in the world Terry's a tree working hard to replace the oxygen you're wasting. You're a great conversation topic. Not when you're here but when you leave. You had so much potential. Stole this from an ex-girlfriend. What part of your body do you find annoying or weird? My brain. This little bitch won't stop bringing stuff up I don't want to think about. As a side sleeper I would love nothing more than to be able to remove my arms while I'm sleeping. Uterus. Every month it's like ayo did you get laid without a shield? Nah. I guess I gotta hurt you. Why do I bite my cheeks? Like what the f teeth. The double chin in spite of being thin. I feel like my ass is too big for a guy. I was cursed to have an absolute dumpy. Stop asking for pictures you absolute deviants. My knees. Every now and then my knees just hurt randomly and I'm only 18. My teeth can stain by a few days of morning coffee. Pimples, they are the only thing I find useless in my body and are shit. I have a mole on the back of my neck and for some reason I can't stand touching it. It feels wrong. I think I ought to have it removed. Pinky toe, like why the F does it go sideways? What's something you do if there were no consequences? Travel around the world, no visas, fines deportations if I overstay, etc. Max out a bunch of credit cards, take out as many loans as I could and never pay them back. Live my life in peace. Eat when I'm hungry, sleep when I'm tired and never work for anything in my life. Nice try FBI. Not today CIA. Steal a lot of shit. Undo my spinal fusion and get my spine aligned correctly so that I'll have a normal torso and my back pain will be gone because my muscles won't be compressed anymore. Live my life. Here's a new if that helps. Find a way to wire all the money from several billionaires offshore accounts and do some Robin Hood type shit. Also smooch every person I've had a crush on before. What non-sexual fantasies do you have? Building a small machine shop in my backyard. Mill, lathe, welders, and an abundance of random steel they'll never get rid of. Disposable income. Turns out my husband's death was a terrible accounting mistake by the hospital and he just comes home one day after his amnesia clears. Buying a house. A bathtub that is deep enough the water covers my melons and me knees, and is long enough I can lay flat on the bottom. 
Right now it's just loading my truck up and disappearing into the woods for a week. Strolling into the Vatican archives whenever I please to read whatever I want. Savings. No debt. Being able to retire one day. Being able to lose weight without even trying. Hell, I'd take being able to lose weight when I am trying. 8 hours of sleep. Having a home theater. The kind that actually look like mini movie theater, and are only found in multi-million dollar homes. For some reason, I think about it a lot. It would just be sick to invite loved ones over to watch our favorite movies and fool around as if we were in an actual theater. Sometimes when I'm out in the woods I'm really tempted to get as lost as I can, or when I'm driving to just keep going. Not because I hate my life, but because if I could start over somewhere where no one knew me I would. What is an item of clothing that for you is an instant turn off? Message t-shirts that brag about how tough or nasty you are. Ankle monitor. Those stupid t-shirts, the ones with a paragraph of words about my daughter is sweet, kind, crazy, etc. And yes she bought me this shirt. You know the ones? They have ones for moms, dads, uncles etc. Very specifically my fiancé's gray and orange plaid shorts. Hey, I love your fiancé's gray and orange plaid shorts. A white shirt with food stains on it. Rubber boots and gloves. No electrical conductivity. Definite turn off. Live, laugh, love. Yeah, I'm more of a die, scream, suffer kind of person. The sporty dad sunglasses. Yeah, you know the ones. You just got an offer for $600,000, but to collect it, you gotta have naughty time with the main character of the last TV show you watched. Who will it be? Currently watching Sesame Street with my kid. This is awkward. Just watched an episode of Hoarders, I'll pass. Geralt of Rivia. Where do I pick up the money? Dolores from Westworld, I am all for it. Jeremy Clarkson. Choke me you British orangutan. The Mandalorian, I guess this is the way. Optimus Prime, watch out, I'm coming for that robo booty, Autobots, pull out. Pingu, I'll bring the fish. Walter White. You're goddamn right. I've been watching Disney Channel all day with my niece and nephew, so Lil Pass. I'm riding the F out of Spongebob. What's a subtle sign that someone is not a nice person? When they always playfully insult you, but can't handle any criticism about themselves at all. They keep reminding you that they're a nice person. Don't mistake niceness for goodness. Some of the best, most morally consistent and forward-thinking people I know are also rigid and unpleasant to deal with. And some of the slimiest, most backst having sons of bitches I work with every day are nice enough to charm you into loving them. Niceness is a demeanor, goodness is a core value. But to the intent of the question, being rude to service staff is the number one way to lose my respect. This is going to sound pretty weird, but hear me out, there are usually two types of people, the it's their job anyways and the no need to make their job any harder for example, if someone just dumps their trash wherever at a restaurant, store, etc. because it's someone's job to clean it up. They're probably kind of a jerk. Everything you say you've done they've done twice. What is the most disgusting secret you're hiding right now? My younger brother used to eat the dog food because he thought it would make him better friends with the dog. We began to leave a bowl out for him next to the dog bowl. When I was younger, I would steal coins from my parents and when I had enough, I would bring them to my dad and had them changed to paper bills and he would be so proud of me for saving coins that he would buy me ice cream or sweet bread. He knew. Uncle confided in me that he stopped taking the medications that are keeping him alive because he can't handle the weight of his life. Currently trying to be there for him as much as I can, but haven't told anyone because I feel like it's his choice, and I'd likely want the same in his situation. He's just worn out and feels like he's done his time, and has already done what he can for the people around him. When my sister and I were little, she would lick her cat because she thought she was helping to clean him. As a student with a shitty waitering job paying me almost nothing I used to eat the food my customers didn't want after I took their plates to the kitchen. I secretly broke a 2500 euro printer, that is rare and precious, I just fixed it just enough that the second person using it got blamed for this and almost expelled from school. Maybe the person before you did the same thing to you. In biology class we were dissecting a pig's eyeball and my hand slipped and the eyeball fell on the floor and me being extremely lazy I kicked it under a cabinet and it lay there for two years until someone finally found it. 
I'm just picturing some unfortunate cleaner randomly finding this effing desiccated eyeball. What terrified you as a kid that isn't scary now? Looking at mirrors in the night. Thought they would become haunted in the dark. Asking my grandpa a question. Man was he intimidating to talk to as a kid. Now I love talking to him when I can. Running up the basement stairs after turning off the light. Just kidding that is still terrifying. I'm 35 and I still do this. If someone says they don't I'm pretty sure they're lying. We all know the soon as the lights go out, the mobs spawn. That worms would come out of my shower head. The video for Michael Jackson's thriller. My grandmother's wallpaper at night. Every time I have a ghost dream, it's always in my grandma's house, and always in the room with the rose wallpaper. No idea why. Bees and wasps. To be honest I still prefer they don't buzz around me but when I was little I remained a safe 5 meters away from them. Thunderstorms. I used to hide under the covers and could only run from the room between flashes. Now I will sit at the window and watch. I love a good thunderstorm now. All it took was a, very weird, 9-ish year old me to stand at the window during a big storm and yell things like is that all you've got? Yeah, kinda like Lieutenant Dan but before I ever saw Forrest Gump. What's a form of mental abuse that no one really talks about? A partner or friend who gives detailed heartfelt apologies but continues to do the same old harmful stuff. Like they have figured out how to humble themselves as a weapon and have gotten really good at thorough apologies but seem to make zero effort to change their behavior. I don't know how is it called, but I never had nice explanation when I didn't understand something. I would get yelled at, called names, or sometimes got just silent treatment. I still get nauseas at work when I have to ask for help when I don't understand something or I'm not sure how to do it. Loudly drawing attention to someone stepping outside their comfort zone, look WHO's leaving her room. Why are you wearing a dress? Who are you? Are you reading a book? A real book? How to make sure your kid thinks they're never allowed to explore or change anything about themselves 101. Excessive passive aggressiveness. It's not quite bullying. But it is. It's not quite rude. But it is. It's easily dismissed as nothing, but years and years of it is so mentally and emotionally exhausting. Not allowing someone the time and space to cool down or collect their thoughts when an issue is brought up. Had a spouse follow me through the house until the conclusion he found acceptable was reached. Being brought up by parents who think that if you're fed, watered and clothed that's their responsibilities completed. When someone consistently undermines your interests and goals and mocks you for them. What is the most disturbing thing to know? I work as an anesthesiologist. I've put people to sleep in an emergency situation knowing that they will almost certainly not survive the surgery. These are generally situations where without surgery the patient will not survive but even with surgery the chances of survival are still small. In most of these instances the patients are too obtuned or aren't conscious enough to be aware of the gravity of their situation but in a number of instances the patients have been conscious, talking although clearly anxious. I try to reassure and tell the person that we won't leave their side that we will take care of them and that they will be fine. It kind of f's me up a bit to say this to someone but I always include the last part because I just don't see the point in telling them the truth. I had one guy tell me he felt like he wasn't going to make it. I told him he would make it but knew he wasn't going to. I put him to sleep knowing that the last human face he would see before he passers away was mine as he stared up at me as I held an oxygen mask over his mouth and nose. I'd consider myself quite a resilient person but knowing this stuff is a bit of a load to carry around. What is something common that has never happened to you? Being contacted by a Nigerian prince who needs my help and bank account details to secure his inheritance. One time I was making fun of my ex and a friend because I had never sharded. Within the week I was sick and I sharded. So I will not be playing this game. Stung by B. I've never broken a bone. I broke my first bone at the age of 49. COVID. Two years now, and I've managed to avoid it. I've been working and around people due to my job the whole entire time, too, so I'm lucky. Chickenpox. Never got food poisoning, but I just know I'm gonna get it soon. I had Campylobacter and it was the worst experience of my life. It was like shitting diarrhea made of glass shards, and doing it so often it felt like I was prolapsing while my asshole bathed in acid. I can honestly say I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Hitting a deer. I live in a tiny northern area and it's almost like a rite of passage to hit a deer. Oof, now it's definitely going to happen. I never had my wisdom teeth, third molars, removed. All four came in, fit well, doing fine. 
Whenever I see a new dentist, they're always surprised. I also never had braces. These may be related. What was your it seemed like a good idea at the time story? I ran across the street with my eyes closed. When I was 14. I didn't get hit by a car. However, I ran into a tree head first and cut my face and knee open. For all of you asking what my thought process was, it is as follows, who am I kidding I have no idea what I was thinking. Shooting each other with fireworks on New Year's. One landed directly in between my eyes, luckily, it didn't go off and I wasn't injured. Holding onto my friend's car mirror while skateboarding on a newly paved parking lot. Me and my friend used to play a game where we threw a Swiss Army knife up in the air at night time and then ran away from it, with the knife part out. Being roommates with someone I had a huge crush on. It didn't end well. Playing sled dog with my newly rescued husky and a long board on the hilly streets near my house in college. Snapped my right forearm in half and had to walk a mile back home to get a ride to the hospital. Moving in with my girlfriend. I effed up, it's a disaster that I should have seen coming. Hey you know those degenerates who you stay out drinking with until sunrise every other day? Why don't you live with them for the last two years of law school? That won't cause any issues at all. Cue two years of abuse to my body and liver and more than a little strain between me and my friends at the time. Overall it was fun, but definitely not a good idea. What feels illegal, but isn't? It feels illegal getting out of my wheelchair. I'm not paralyzed but it helps having a wheelchair but people always think I'm faking a disability when I get out my chair. Card counting in a casino. It's totally legal within the law, but the security and management will make you feel like a criminal for doing it. The first time driving a car after you've got your license. To add to that, driving on main roads while under your provisional license. Driving next to a cop at the speed limit. Overtaking a cop that is driving below the speed limit. U.S. legislators are allowed to trade stock in and sit on boards of private companies while passing legislation affecting those companies. Having fun at work. Your boss walks around the corner and everybody scatters in the most totally not suspicious way. Taking someone's shopping cart with their groceries in it, while inside the store. Telling your barber that you don't like the haircut. Your employer will tell you you're not allowed to discuss your wages but legally you are and you cannot be fired for it. Taking home the free ducks from the park. Watching a video on your phone at full volume in a public place, I've done this a few times on accident and I wanted to crawl out of my skin and die. What is classy if you're rich, but trashy if you're poor? Someone else raising your kids? Police escorts. Escorts. Not working, while still getting an income. Lower class, welfare. Middle class, unemployment. Upper class, constant flow of assets day drinking. If you live in a tiny home it's eco-friendly if you live in a trailer you're trash. Casinos. If you are weird and rich people call you eccentric, but if you are weird and poor people call you crazy. Giving your kids hard to spell slash say names. Wearing a bathrobe all day. Asking your friends for money. If you're rich, it's a fundraiser. If you're poor, it's a handout. What do men want that they will never admit out loud? I just want a break, man. Someone to encourage them and make them feel important. A hug. Just a hug. Love, from a wife or girlfriend. I love when she just does random stuff to me like play with my hair or put her head on top of mine, makes me feel like I mean something. Pictures of Spider-Man. Just because we don't open up, doesn't mean we don't want to. To be the little spoon. When we open up, we don't want you to throw that stuff back at us during an argument. Shit hurts and carries the reason we did not open up in the first place. A job that actually pays for a goddamn place to live, that'd be a nice start. But if you meant, what men want that women don't, probably like being a werewolf or something. You choose a superpower, but every time you activate it you turn into a pig. What is it? Invisible so no one sees me as a pig. Speed like the flash. The pig part doesn't matter because I'm already a pig. The power to be irresistibly attractive to every human adult. Spider-Man powers. Peter Porker, the Spider-Ham. To be able to speak and understand every language fluently. I'll be world-renowned. Being able to talk while in pig form. 
Would love to freak people out lol. Superhuman intellect. I'd find a way to use my super intellect without becoming a pig or just roll with it and be the world's smartest pig. Wolverine regeneration, bacon anyone? Wings, so pigs fly. What's a cool fun fact that you know? Van Gogh killed himself one year after Nintendo was founded. That if sound could be transmitted through space, the sun would be so loud on Earth it would be the equivalent of standing next to a jet engine, even though it's 94 million miles away. If every person on Earth fought 1v1 until there was only one winner, that person would only have to win 33 times. Platypus don't have nipples, to feed their young they sweat milk. The Nazis planned to assassinate Winston Churchill with an explosive chocolate bar. Probably would have succeeded if they'd made an exploding cigar. Dinosaurs existed for so long that there were still dinosaur fossils from previous eras while other dinosaurs from future eras were alive. So basically, when T-Rex was still alive and well, stegosaurs was nothing more than fossilized bones under their feet even back then. One of the Zimbabwe's president's name was Banana. Cuttlefish can accurately match the color and texture of their environment despite the fact that they're colorblind. There are more plastic flamingo lawn ornaments in the U.S. than there are wild flamingos on the entire planet. Same with plastic dinosaurs. When they first measured the height of Mount Everest it was exactly 29,000 feet, but as that sounds like a made-up number they declared it to be 29,002 feet. You are gotta blow a job interview as fast as you can, what do you do? Ask about the sexual harassment policy. How close are we to a school zone, exactly? Sit down. Reach into my backpack and pop open a beer. Scratch your ass then go for the handshake. Don't forget to sniff your fingers before going for the handshake. And gag after sniffing. Show up drinking a beer and when the interviewer brings it up apologetically say oh, sorry bud, how rude of me. And proceed to pull another warm beer out of my purse and toss it to them. I'd hire you. Show up with my mom and have her answer all the questions for me. Just don't show up. Say meow at the end of each sentence. I'd appear with my well-loved plushie and let it do the interview for me. Did this years ago. I drank a Coke quickly to settle my stomach before a big interview for a dream job. Right as introductions are being made and I am shaking the CEO's hand, I don't say nice to meet you. I instead let out the loudest, nastiest belch ever formed by my digestive tract. Epic echo in the hallway, too. No way to recover, I just turned around silently and left. Never heard from them again. Ask for the Wi-Fi pass is the first thing. What should we enjoy before it's no longer around? Our parents. One minute they're youthful, the next they're elderly. Don't take them for granted, give them a call because one day you won't be able to. Your friends, and having time to spend with them. Good health. Youth, like being a child. Doing things without a care in the world teeth any band or artist while they are still touring slash alive the great barrier reef venice florida anything near the ocean really grandparents and family history when they die it's gone forever your significant other love them with your whole heart and appreciate them for loving you back don't take them for granted or you'll be left emptier than you've ever been before what's a mild inconvenience that drives you fucking crazy when someone goes to shower slash bathroom right when you were about to. Washing your face in the bathroom sink and the water trickling down your arms towards your elbows. Stoplights feel timed so that if you go in one direction for a few miles and you have to stop at a red light, chances are you will have to stop at all the red lights in that direction. When two people in a shop stop, trolleys side by side and block the entire aisle just to have a conversation. Apparently I am the exact height to have my pockets get caught on my drawers in the kitchen. I swear my basketball shorts will reach for the drawer handles and grab them. Makes me see red. When my Bluetooth doesn't connect in the car. It makes me want to stab my phone even though it's not a big deal at all and has zero effect on my life. Getting all comfortable in bed, well positioned and everything, then realizing you forgot something in the living room slash kitchen and having to get up and get it. Oblivious Drivers not ones texting, they know they're being an ass. I'm talking about those people who honestly have no fucking clue how to drive properly, yet totally think they're good at it. Leaves me fuming. Especially when they're putting other people's lives in danger. Unskippable midvid ads on YouTube and in. Um. 
other YouTube-like sites. Drivers who don't indicate when changing lanes. It doesn't even take a second. You wake up with 1 billion US dollars mysteriously in your bank account. What's something you still refuse to buy? Live, laugh, love decorations. NFTs. Adobe license. Lottery tickets. Not much point now. A mansion. No one needs 24 bedrooms and 48 toilets, unless it's a medical wing for people with IBS. Those ugly ass Yeezy sneakers. A Birkin bag or similar designer item. For those unfamiliar, it's a handbag that costs as much as a car. As much as a car? I did a quick Google search on Birkin bags and the first one that showed up was like 320k used. I can buy 50 cars for that. People actually pay that much for a handbag? If there was a zombie apocalypse, what do you think will ask Reddit questions be like? People who hide their bite. Why? What's the most wholesome experience you've had with a zombie? Where were you the day it started? What's something good that you think will come after this thing? Zombie challenges on TikTok. Your username is now our survival tactic. How dead are you? Depends on the damage confetti can actually cause when at a high velocity. Redditors who have had to kill an infected loved one. How do you cope with the guilt? I keep them in my basement, and relive the sexy times whenever I feel nostalgic. Can I get pregnant from a zombie? What can I feed the 27 zombies I've been keeping in my basement? How do I train my plants to fight zombies? What's the most creative thing you've used as a weapon to kill zombies? If I bite a zombie, will it turn into human? What survival myth is completely wrong and can get you killed? You can drink water from a cactus. Any liquid inside a cactus will be highly acidic and likely to cause nausea and diarrhea, further dehydrating you. Follow flying birds to find water they can simply be flying to spend a night anywhere, so we can't rely on them. Fish are the ones you should follow to find water. Conserving water. You should not stretch a glass of water over four days. When you are thirsty, you need water. Concerning frostbite, do not rub someone's frostbitten skin or pour hot water on it to warm them up. Such measures will damage the skin even more severely. That moss grows on the north side of a tree. It can grow all over the tree, so it's not a steadfast rule that you should make important decisions solely on. Most of the stuff Beer Grills does, like eating raw meat, picking and eating fruit out of bear shit, or squeezing the juice out of elephant shit and drinking it. If you're in a tornado, open all your windows to equalize the pressure inside to match the outside. If you're in a tornado opening any window or door will create a wind tunnel that rips your entire roof off. You cannot eat everything that an animal can eat. There are things animals can eat that humans find toxic, so eating anything you see animals eating can lead to you potentially eating deadly berries or mushrooms. What's your biggest fear? Memory loss. Literally, everything I know in my life is memories. We know, you've told us repeatedly. Drowning, getting stuck in some tight place and asphyxiating slash dying of hunger in there, or getting steamed to death. That's pretty much the shared first place. The ocean, and cliff slash high edges. Dick falls off. Being one of those people who dies alone in their home and doesn't get found for weeks or more because they have no one who cares enough to notice they're not around anymore. That I may suffer a debilitating injury or degenerative neurological disorder and be incapable of taking my own life if I deem it necessary. Snakes. Fuck you snakes on plane. I made a mistake of seeing that movie when I was like 5 to 6. The fear I has stuck with me. I choked on a piece of steak home alone a few months ago and had to give myself the Heimlich maneuver. It took three tries. I'll never forget my dog staring at me and the thought of my girlfriend coming home to find me dead on the floor of our apartment. Now I think about that every time leet by myself. So choking to death alone is my greatest fear. What was that one thing you tried out due to fear of missing out? Smoking, I guess. I got curious. First time I hated it. After a few more, I started to like it, so I decided to throw the rest away before it was too late. Bought a $20 raffle ticket for a much hyped up chance to win $5,000. Turns out the raffle promoters were scammers and everyone lost their money. Anal. Hated it. Tried it again just confirm. Still hated it. At least I confirmed it though. Ate ten ants to join my brother's club in first grade. Said I could only join if I ate ten ants. So I did. And then he disbanded the club. One of those muddy races. 
Got a skin infection and sun poisoning. Prom. Hated it. Knew I would. Glad I won anyway. Zookeepers have read it. What's the lowdown, dirty, inside scoop on zoos? We closed the baboon exhibit because a baboon had a stillbirth and the troop was grieving. In reality they were throwing parts of the infant corpse around and there was nothing we could do about it. Brings a whole new meaning to the term baby shower. When you're cleaning underneath the perches, parrots will wait for you to look up before taking a shit. They have a good aim. That's how you get shit in the mouth. Don't look up. Lions know fully well that they can't get through the glass. They do that just to get attention. Dead zoo animals are sometimes fed to carnivores. There's a farm slash zoo in the UK that uses crocodiles to get rid of dead cows. The owner once said he'd like the same end when he dies. Partner was a zookeeper in Dallas. Safety protocols for when a large, dangerous animal escapes its enclosure dictate that you lock yourself in whatever room you can get to quickest and grab the nearest weapon, which, for most zookeepers, was a broom or rake for cleaning up animal poop. Our lions will urinate on guests if they get too close, which is always funny to see. Not so funny to smell. The amount of dumbasses who complain to management about paying to go to the zoo, then not seeing any animals is unreal. Like, what do you want us to do? Go in there with sticks and chase them out of their hidey holes? Sorry buddy, not going to happen. What's something you find weird that is 100% normal? Clapping, animals must think we're mental. Apart from seals, seals know. Crying, why does my body create liquid from my eyes if something is sad? Birds having a built-in GPS system. They can fly south for the winter, then fly back to the exact same tree up north. The fact that all those other people you see out in public all have their own lives that they go home to completely separate from yours. Reading. Like, there are these random squiggles and we can instantly interpret them into complex thoughts, concepts, feelings, emotions, from people we've never met or sometimes even heard of before. It's weird. The entire concept of laughter. Why does our face contort and our diaphragm spasm when certain things happen? And how do our brains decide what things are funny and what things aren't? My tongue is a meat tentacle. Some mold is edible. No matter how stinky it is. Having pets. I have two dogs that I love to death but when I really think about it, I realize they're just two random animals that I saw one day and said yeah I like that one and put them in my home against their will and I give them food regularly and smother them with more affection than I give to other people. And those two random animals seem to think that's totally dope and show signs of liking me back. What minor injury hurts like a mofo? Biting your tongue. Or your lip or cheek. When you hit your head on the bottom of an open cabinet door. Leg cramps. A nail that got clipped too short, bonus points if you get salt on your fingers. Sleeping in a weird position and waking up with a stiff painful neck. When you open your mouth too big and the corners of your mouth have small cuts. That fucking ingrown hair or zit or whatever right inside the tip of your nose. That pinky toe conversing with the corner of the table. Funny bone. Not so funny. What are the unspoken rules of sex? If you or they fart or queef, just move on like nothing happened. Even if the other person didn't ask about your STD history, if you have something, say something. Lock the door if you're at Nana's house. If Nana walks in and sees you having sex, then just keep going. If you stop, you're the one that got caught having sex. If you keep going, Nana is the pervert that was watching you have sex. Wash your dick. Vag to ass, never ass to vag. That's how we get kidney infections. Not in her hair. If she says I am close do not go fast, slow or anything. Just keep doing what you're doing. Wash your asshole not your ass. If you're unsure what to do, just put something in your mouth and hope for the best. Don't wipe your dick in the curtains. If your body's pushed together in a weird way and you make a fart noise with your chests or something, it's okay to laugh. That shit is funny. What are some girl secrets guys don't know about? Sometimes we stand up and things just gush out of us. We always think it's our period. When you hold your breasts when you walk up the stairs so they don't jiggle because that's uncomfortable. Periods suck overall but they are very different depending on the girl. Some women get emotional, some are completely normal. Some periods last for 8 days, some last for 3 days. Some girls are in extreme pain, some just have mild discomfort. Some flows are very heavy, some are very light. AKA, I'm on my period can mean anything from sorry, 
I'm completely incapacitated or I'm just feeling a little worse than usual. Under boob sweat is a thing. How slowly we have to pull out a dry tampon in order not to rip our vagina tissue out. When girls are particular about their hair products, it's not us being overly superficial or picky. When your hair is long, the right shampoo slash conditioner slash drying routine can be the difference between soft waves and a dry, ratty mess. The feeling of having fart bubble popping forwards and squeezing your thighs to pop it. Wow, didn't expect this to blow up. Today I learned that guys get this too. Now I have a mental image of dicks flapping up like the lid on a kettle. When we say don't stop during sex it means don't stop doing what you are doing don't go harder, don't go faster, just don't stop doing it exactly as you are right now. It seems that when this is said the guy speeds up or starts fucking up the rhythm. What are some guy secrets girls don't know about? Sometimes we use the stream of our pee to try and clean poop stains on the bottom of toilet bowls. Just because we're in the shower for an abnormally long time doesn't mean we're jerking off. Guys like to have long hot showers too you know. Boners don't automatically mean arousal. That will never be said enough. If you have a son, don't rush into his room and demand that he get up immediately to do chores or some shit. He definitely has morning wood and would appreciate not needing to hide a boner from his mom. Give him like 5 minutes. The occasional longer stride to attempt to inconspicuously adjust our balls. We can't move our penis without closing our butthole. You just made men all over the internet clench their ass. That's power you can't buy. I'm not staring at you, I'm zoned out thinking about how I'd start a brewery in medieval England whilst my eyes just happen to be facing your direction. Guys also like to be walked up to and asked out. What life-changing item can you buy for less than $100? A king-sized blanket for a queen-sized bed. A dash cam for your car can protect you from wrongful claims also vandalisms and theft. Heroin. Edit, you just said life-changing, it doesn't need to be a good thing. May sound simple, but a good pillow. It is amazing the change in body aches, and sleep you see when you have a good pillow that fits you. Blackout curtains for your bedroom. Step 1, throw away all your socks. Step 2, buy 3 to 5 packages of the same sock. Step 3, enjoy a life without ever having to match socks again. What is the most pleasant and uplifting fact you know? There's an island covered in land mines that is used as a penguin wildlife preserve because the birds are too small to set off the mines, and has a 100% success rate in keeping poachers out. Blind people smile even though they have never seen anyone smile. Cows have best friends. Skin-to-skin -skin contact encourages the body to produce oxytocin, a hormone largely responsible for emotions such as trust, romance and contentment, as well as helping injuries heal faster. You can literally hug your way to health and happiness. The voice actor of Spongebob is married to the voice actor of Plankton's computer wife. Otters have a little pouch that they store food and their favorite rock in. Four years ago I was suffering from major clinical depression, suicidal every now and then, and didn't really see a way forward in life. But today I'm doing fine. I'd even venture to say I'm happy. I suppose that's pleasant and I hope someone finds it uplifting? Especially if you're reading this while depressed, I know it doesn't feel like it at the moment, but shit getting better is a possible outcome. Otters hold hands while sleeping so that they don't drift away from each other. You just beat your personal best for being alive. What is your but wait, it gets worse story. Walked in on my ex having sex with a girl and a guy but wait, it gets worse. Told her it was time for her to move. Three days later she shows up to get her stuff and smashes me in the face with a table lamp. Police show up and arrest me but wait, it gets worse. Sitting in the cell for a few hours then two detectives come and take me to an interrogation room. They have my pistol sitting on the table along with ammo and a few knives, okay no big deal but wait, it gets worse. One of the detectives leaves, comes back a minute later and slams a sawed off shotgun onto the table. WTF? Apparently her new beau had hidden it in the furnace room. Took 7 years and cost about $10,000 in lawyers fees to get my record cleared but wait, it gets worse. Bitch gave me HPV. What's the best theory on UFOs or aliens you've ever heard? That if any civilization elsewhere in the universe had the technology to reach us, for any reason, they'd be very likely to be also be able to disguise their presence from our detection methods, i.e. they could observe us close up using nanotech, microscopic biological spacecraft etc. and we'd never know. They came, they saw, they weren't impressed. Interdimensional not extraterrestrial. There are so many star systems with potentially inhabitable planets out there that the chances that we have been the only life in the universe is extremely slim. The question, 
instead, is whether life arising elsewhere has managed to survive destruction and remain alive today such that they might be able to contact us. That is to say, there have probably been countless civilizations for the past several billion years that simply haven't made it. If aliens are on this planet, they are likely using the ocean as a place to hide. They come from the ocean, not space. The best two I've heard, we don't allow ourselves to contact lost tribes in the Amazon or other wild places. Extraterrestrials may have similar laws on a galactic scale. We split the atom, but made weapons out of them instead of trying to reach the stars. They leave us alone out of fear that we'll destroy ourselves if war accidentally breaks out. Aliens don't necessarily mean an intelligent civilization. Serious what is the scariest, most bone-chilling moment you have ever witnessed, or have been told in your life? I work in mental health, particularly with people who have extensive suicidal ideation and multiple psychiatric hospitalizations. Despite working with this population for close to 10 years, I have only had one client successfully commit suicide. They poured gasoline over themselves and set themselves on fire. There are no words for how extremely terrifying that is to see. The worst part was they didn't immediately die. I will hear them say, that wasn't what I wanted, for the rest of my life. Seeing my sister at her worst when she was anorexic. It looked like all her bones, including her skull, were about to pop out of her skin. Scariest moment nodding off behind the wheel, just finished working 14 hours. The only thing that saved me was the car who laid on their horn as I cut them off saved me from running straight into a barricade. Creepiest moment, watching my parents take their last breaths, death rattle slash wheeze, in the hospital after fighting small cell lung cancer. Stage 4, this happened 5 years apart. BTW, I have nightmares and chills because I can still hear slash imagine it. Watching as a nice nurse tried more and more desperately, and in vain, to find my unborn son's heartbeat at 32 weeks. What's the most spooky fact you know? According to the FBI, there are between 35 to 50 active serial killers in the US at this time. Cockroaches. They can sense changes in air pressure, they know you're coming before you open the door. They can fit through holes thick as a dime. They have white blood. There's at least five roaches you don't see for every roach you do see. They reproduce so quick they can evolve to gain immunities from poisons. No photographers or reporters have ever been allowed inside the slinky factory. After a guillotine execution, there were records of optical sensors working anywhere from 15 to 30 seconds. That means the eyes still looked around whether those are just twitches or there is still some synaptic activity I don't know. It's not like anyone has come back after a guillotine execution, but I find it that extremely disturbing. That any of us here can die any moment, from whatever. Our perception makes us think we're under control, but it's all chaos. Not only is there a skeleton inside you, but that skeleton is always wet. No one knows who named our planet Earth. The fact that the vast majority of oceans is still unexplored seems pretty spooky to me. There is a day in every year which will eventually become your death date. Human beings have explored approximately 83% of all land on Earth. So, 17% of the Earth's land mass. That's a lot of land. A lot of land we know nothing about. That is why stories about the chupacabra and shit aren't too far-fetched. You walk around with a turd inside you. People who used to not believe in ghosts but do now, what experience changed your mind? I saw a reflection of myself at the end of a hallway in a friend's apartment building, only he told me the day after there was never any mirror in the hallways. I was 8 when my grandma died, I was sad. So around 2 months passed and I was going at grandma's house where my grandpa lives. So I wake up at 3 am and hear footsteps from bedroom door, I froze, I saw my grandma walking up to me and she said, hello little sweetie, and walked away. It was not sleep paralysis because I could move my hands and feet. At morning I told to my grandpa about it and he said, I've seen grandma almost every night, she likes to visit, so don't be scared next time when you visit. Worked at a public pool, I would work alone after hours cleaning the building and the pool. One night around 2 am. I'm cleaning the change rooms. The pool has been closed for 4 hours at this time. I hear the sound of a child's laughter and bare feet running across the pool deck. I go out and scan the area, there's nobody in sight. The doors are all closed and locked, there is nowhere a kid could be hiding. No wet footprints on the pool deck. I recheck the doors and the security monitors. I am the only person in the building. It was unsettling. What's that one disgusting thing that everybody except you, 
seems to like. Pictures with babies being gross, like with spaghetti all over their faces and that sort of thing. I do not get the appeal and doubt I ever will. Those mukbang videos that have millions of views. Those social media videos of food being made with so much heavy and greasy shit. You know, the type where it's a whole burger, cooked into a quesadilla with a pound of cheese, then fried and covered in three different sauces. Mega tall burgers that nobody could actually eat and burgers completely covered in cheese or sauce. If you can't taste everything in a single bite, your recipe slash preparation is wrong. Big burgers should be wider, not taller. You've got a big burger offering? Break it down into multiple burgers. Same amount of food. Do you have a shitload of melted cheese to offer? There are better ways than dousing. A foot tall burger in melted cheese if you plan on people to eat it instead of just sharing it on Facebook slash TikTok slash Instagram. Lip injections. You look like a clown. I don't get it. People. What are some little known relationship green flags? I feel like there's a lot of detailed examples that largely boil down to two things, empathy and emotional maturity. The ability to coexist in very companionable silence. Being able to emotionally connect even after an argument. Honesty. Genuine interest in each other's hobbies, don't have to do them, but at least support it. Strong communication. You feel like you're hanging out with your best friend, except you wanna smash. I drink a lot of water and sometimes my BF would stay until late and I would fall asleep, before leaving he always made sure I had a glass full of water on my nightstand in case I woke up thirsty. It's always the small details. When your significant other takes criticism from you seriously without immediately trying to turn it back on you. If the converse is also true, you two stand a great chance of going the distance. Listening to you and remembering the things you've said. Back when me and my boyfriend started dating, he'd sometimes bring up things that I've said before, X, my favorite foods, candies, etc. Made me super happy and could tell he genuinely cared. Active listening. Not just being there while you talk actually giving opinions, advice if asked for, and generally caring for the conversion. Bonus, active listening during an argument. Not trying to win, but trying to resolve the problem. You meet your 13-year-old self, but you can only tell them three words. What do you say and why? Bitcoin hits 50k. This is the most useful Bitcoin advice on here. Just telling me to buy it, I'd have ended up cashing out at $100. Brush your teeth. Brush and floss. Floss. Every. Day. Don't date. Invest Amazon 2003. Nat has herpes. Don't trade Charizard. Listen to dad. My mom was batshit insane and alienated her kids from dad. Would have saved me a lot of tears had I never trusted her. Get brother help. Hug dad more. Don't marry Jeff. Give mom love. She would pass away a year later. Serious, what's the family secret you're not supposed to know about? I'm not supposed to know that the father I grew up with was not my biological father. My sister, in a vindictive moment, spilled the beans and I was sad for about a week but it hasn't troubled me since then. I had a great father for 23 years which is more than some people can say. A father is someone who cares, loves and takes care of a kid, regardless of the, I'm glad it worked out for you. My dad was paying child support to somebody that nobody knows. Found out only after he died. Cousin was killed by a bear and they never told us, but my sister and I always got yelled at for making jokes about bears killing people and we never knew why. My grandmother told me on her deathbed that my dad has a daughter from another woman. My great grandparents were very poor in Missouri back in the 1940s and 50s. They had 11 kids. Apparently, my great grandfather would make my grandmother and great aunt sleep with his friends for money. My great grandmother allowed it to happen. Because of this, none of the older female children of my great-grandparents would refer to them as mom or dad. It was strictly on a first-name basis. I have the recipe to the sacred sweet potato casserole from my ex-fiancé's mom that I couldn't have until I became part of the family. I cook it every Thanksgiving now. It was worth the failed engagement to get. My grandma's best friend slept with my granddad, her then-husband, 30 years ago. Yes they are still friends. Physically speaking. What's your biggest turn off, be brutally honest. Bad hygiene. Yup, especially because this one is 100% within your control, barring any medical conditions you can't help, 
Of course. Brush your teeth, shower, wear deodorant. It's pretty simple. Extreme plastic surgery. If you used it to fix your nose after it was broken as a kid or something like that, okay sure, but having lips that look like they are about to pop if you eat something spicy then no thank you. People who refuse to eat vegetables or drink water, we're not 10 anymore have some effing asparagus. Bad tribal or star tattoos. Too much hair gel. Too much cologne. Sounds like you're describing the perfect 2000s dude though. In 2001 my hair was sharp enough to draw blood and yes, the punk band I was in sucked. Eating with your mouth open, talking loud in the public so everyone can you hear, a person who is full of drama, acting erratic and causing public scenes. Are my biggest turnoffs. Gross toenails. Cigarette smoker, not judging I just can't stand the smell and there's literally nothing you can do to hide it. B.O. Whose voice just effing annoys you. TikTok voiceovers from that robotic lady, etc. on every video. My voice when I hear it in any sort of recording. Yeah, your voice is awful. Literally any YouTuber whose videos are aimed for kids. Trump. Even before he was a politician his voice and way of speaking disgusts me on a deep level. Like thinking about licking slimy spiders or something. The text-to-speech voice from TikTok. It's like people on TikTok are trying their bets to make the worst content possible, because I can't think of a voice that is more obnoxious than that one. Any random Kardashian. My mom when she's drunk. What pickup lines have actually worked on you? I saw this girl going through Tinder on her phone. I said I've got a tip for your Tinder and when she asked what it was, I said delete it and go out with me we went on a couple of dates. I have bright blue eyes, that apparently look great if I wear a blue. So, out in a blue shirt, a girl came up and said oh my god your eyes are beautiful. Having just painted my room the same color blue as my shirt, I replied you should see how good they look in my bedroom. I guess both of our pickup lines worked, even if mine was totally unintentional. While avoiding a drunk girl at a Halloween party who was stalking me I ducked behind a group of girls and asked one if she would pretend to be my girlfriend so this other girl would leave me alone. Someone walked up and handcuffed us together with fake handcuffs and we started dating. Now we're married. This happened yesterday. This guy who clearly likes me, has been hitting on me for weeks, was like hey, you need to hold this as he had his hand curled in a fist, hiding whatever would be in his hand. He then grabs my hand to put whatever it is in my hand, but just ends up uncurling his fist and interlocking his fingers with mine. I died laughing. It was quite charming. You can. You can let go now. No. What's a pretty girl like you got to cry about? I was at a bar, got into a fight with my sister and she left me there. I was outside, crying on the curb and he hit me with that. That night, we slept together. When I woke up, didn't know each other's name. Nine years later, we're husband and wife. Even today when I cry about something he will say oh looks like I'm getting laid tonight. Not me but I saw my roommate get laid once by saying so do you have a bed? She said yeah. You want to like, see it? They disappeared and met us later at a different place. I tried a few times, never worked out. Went to a party. Had my top couple buttons undone. Girl came over and unbuttoned one more and said she was trying to help me get laid. Happy I took up on that hint. Pet owners of Reddit, what rule did your pet implement in your home? I adopted a bunny a couple months ago. He never lets anyone pick him up. But if you sit on the futon in my room you just entered his territory. Where he owns. He flops over you, begs for rubs and will even bring you carrots as a gift. He owns the futon now. My wiener dog has been around for longer than my brother has been alive. This means that he is higher in the hierarchy he invented than my brother. Thus, my brother is the only person in the family who cannot move my dog should he be sitting where my brother wants to sit. Glasses of water do not go on the nightstand, nor do alarm clocks cell phones, or lamps. Nothing goes on the nightstand but cat. Thou shalt not say the word chicken out loud or all hell will break loose. No two humans can cuddle alone. My dog must tell me about her day as soon as I walk in the door. I usually just listen and ask her why her brother did that. Cat A, front claws may be clipped, but only with the human nail clippers. Cat B, cat will not go to bed until you do. And after 11 o'clock you will be stared at from a distance of no more than 3 feet until you give up and go to bed. 
Don't leave any plate of food on any kind of surface without surveillance. My mom always cooks one extra slice of bacon for the dog. Even if one of the children born of her body and soul starve, the damn dog gets his. What is a simple pleasure that the opposite sex rarely slash never gets to experience? Pissing standing up in a bush. This. Being able to piss literally anywhere. Wearing a light sundress on a hot day. 100% this. I feel for men who have to go to work in a suit in the middle of summer, when I got to wear a tank top and skirt. That feeling when you take off your bra after a very long day. Is that better than never having to deal with wearing a bra in the first place? Getting to put their phone in their pocket. A good ball scratch. Pinch and twist method. The amount of camaraderie from drunk girls in a bathroom. Amusingly, my wife met some drunk girls in a bathroom, helped them a little, and I got a promotion out of it. Pockets. Pockets everywhere. I'm still pissed cargo shorts are frowned upon. They are purse pants and it's a necessity with small kids. When you're in a bar and they put the leftover ice cubes in the urinal, and you make a game of how many of them you can melt before you run out of pee. Getting asked out on dates and getting flowers. Not never but men rarely experience these things.